Well, following the declaration of Uhuru Kenyatta's victory, China says it respects the will of the Kenyan people and has urged all parties to maintain peace. As a good friend, partner and brother of Kenya, China fully respects the choice made by the Kenyans. China sincerely hopes that relevant parties in Kenya can proceed from the interests of the state and the people, stay rational and restrained, and resolve differences properly to secure the peace and stability of the country. Well, let's now get some insights and analysis on the legal and the political implications of the latest developments in Kenya. Sandra Ochola is an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. She joins us here in the Nairobi studios. Thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, well, let's talk about the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, first. He's indicated that he's going to mount pressure for reforms and a new election through his resistance movement and a People's Assembly. Um, how does this fit in with Kenya's legal framework? Mm. I would say that uh, as a country we are open to reforms and uh, those are processes that we have been undergoing for quite a while now and we are set to undergo even more. Uh, however, the basis upon which our, most of our reform agenda is based is on the constitution. And so it is our hope that even as the exercise, uh, the opposition leader and, and his supporters exercise the right uh, to engage in national issues, that they will do this within the legal frameworks. But what about the People's Assembly, a parallel government? Well, <laughs> we haven't been told much uh, about how, when, where, or how frequently they are going to meet. So it will be difficult to speculate at this point exactly what they intend to do. But the reason as to why I'm focusing on the, the issues of, of doing this within the legal and constitutional frameworks is uh, over the past weeks we have seen incidences where extrajudicial means, extra constitutional means have been used towards uh, particular uh, political ends. Just today we saw incidences where journalists were roughed up, a number of them were beaten up. And so one will speculate on one side of the divide that indeed this could be an indication of how uh, the opposition intends to make uh, to make good its, its promises of reforms. But then I think what is important for us is to undertake whatever reforms we'd like to undertake from a legal and constitutional perspective. Well, the opposition leader, he hasn't been clear on whether or not he'll be challenging President mm -hmm. Kenyatta uh, as his election in court. Barring any other suit, do you foresee any development that could bar Kenyatta's swearing in? Mm. Right now, uh, the, most probable, the most probable one would be uh, a suit uh, filed at the Supreme Court. Ideally, it doesn't even have to be the opposition only. You could have even members of the civil society or even uh, uh, ordinary citizen going to court to challenge the election and based on whatever evidence they have, then the Supreme Court will deliberate on the matter and uh, give its verdict uh, on, on, on the way forward. Ideally, what our constitution and our legal framework provides is that uh, after an election, you have seven days upon which someone is expected to petition the Supreme Court, and then the Supreme Court has 14 days to, deber to de deliberate on that case, after which, depending on the kind of verdict it gives, we could go back to another election, or now seven days from the day it gives that verdict, now then the president President will be sworn in. So the only legal framework or the only legal challenge that we can see is if someone goes to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court gives a verdict that can invalidate the election. It has to be within seven days. And it has said. to be within the next seven days. Uh, let's talk about dialogue. Both the Jubilee and the NASA leaders, they say they're open to dialogue, mm -hmm. um, but they seem to have different goals and, and setting different conditions. What kind of engagement is needed? The kind of engagement that uh, I believe is needed at this point is one that uh, uh bridges the gaps that we have seen, especially the political and ethnic gaps that we are currently witnessing in the country. Find these are things that we tend to see with every uh, election or with every political exercise, but I believe what we need now are uh, measures and systems and structures that are going to bring political parties together, going to bring political actors together and citizens as a whole together so that despite uh, the many challenges that we have witnessed at this point, our political leaders can sit down and address the various issues that are continue to divide us as a community. Okay, thank yeah. you very much for your thank analysis. You. Uh, Sandra Ochola there, an advocate of the High Court in Kenya. Thank you very much for thank coming you. in.